Good weekend, all. I wrap scene, and here we are with your weekend edition of your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the weekend of Friday, the 8th of March, 2024. Well, I'm one of the guys today that told clients this morning in the video, I'm talking my paid subscribers in the morning, to have a straight stop in the market under the early morning low. And from there, the market fell, I'd say, $70 on the close, doesn't mean that you're at a top, but I've been peeling and telling clients on this rally, start peeling off positions. Nothing grows to the moon forever, all right? It could, I, I think that it's so rich at these prices that there's a lot of risk in the market. Now, I don't know if anybody saw President Biden seems to be talking about, he knows that interest rates are coming down. Did he talk to somebody at the Fed? What did he do? I mean, none of us know that. But you do have to admit that today, if you looked at the U.S. jobs report, it was encouraging. You took the 10-year note, I think it's at 407, near 408, right around there on the close today. The markets, obviously, if you can get under 4%, the markets get excited. That would not be bearish the stock in this season. It would probably be somewhat supportive to them. But on their own, you saw a correction today happening. And was it Friday? Was it people are just enough? All right, we've seen all this. We went through the speech last night. We, we know where we're at. Uh, probably a little bit of everything. All right, so at least that's all behind us right now. Uh, when I looked at today, you, you can see that TLT down a little bit, but BND was up. So you have a mixed picture here. The dollar uh, was up in UUP, but when you look at the futures, it looks like it's a breakout to the downside. GLD and gold itself continue to move to the upside. Tesla down another $3, just can't catch a bid that can last in that. And even AMC back down. And as I said, I'm watching this chart very close. Hasn't been acting good. Certainly has not thrown out a buy signal. I'm, I'm interested if the movies can grab hold here or not. Uh, you know, for the year, the revenues are still lower than they were, I believe, a year ago, and that isn't good for anything. In Rivian, the market gave up from the high of the day about 50, 60 cents, 80, what was that? No, 90 cents almost. That's quite a bit of a break that the market uh, did have there. And, you know, th there were some people calling about the $14, $15 mark might be it for the time. They got 68, I read today, $68,100 deposits that are fully refundable on the new car that they just announced. So for a hundred bucks, you can get yourself involved and you get in line for something that'll be ready for you in 2026. Who knows what the price will be? Who knows what the car will actually look like at that time? They claim, Generally speaking, when they show you a car, it looks very similar to it. Okay, but that just shows that there's good interest in it. And for a hundred bucks, you get it back, but you just tie it up for that long. Now, I was looking to see, I, I, today I was looking at the NASDAQ stock. I was looking at New York Stock Exchange, looking around to see what's not made a big move. And the Merck hasn't made a big move. I know you're gonna tell me, well, Ira, look at that. I go, I understand it went from about 195 up to 220, but that's nothing compared to these other moves that we've seen everywhere, yet it's got a lot of volume behind it. I mean, trading is picking up. You have markets that are all over the board. They've got good products. So I'm questioning, are the traders going to step in at the 18-day average of closes? That's the red line here. You don't want to see the market under 20240. And if it can hold and not get through that, maybe it gets back to that Bollinger Band at 223. I mean, that would be you know, a $13 move, it's about five, 6%, okay. Now, if it closes over this, the question is, does it start breaking out one way or the other? And if it gets back under that low, you just destroy the bullish action that this has going for it at this point. It is and has worked off an overbought condition. So looking at a weekly basis, I think it's interesting there. I'm still not in love with Microsoft. I'm fearful that Microsoft, when you reopen Monday morning, that you're gonna see that the slow stochastic reading drops under 79. Now, gotta finish there at the end of the week, but it's opening the door to get back, in my opinion, to the 389, 
level, 390 level, that 18-day average. You'd have to take out this week's high to convince me that this is just phony action to the downside. So far, it doesn't look phony to me. In KRE, I explained as best as I could this week that what happened with the New York Community Bank is unique to them. It's not the whole part of this, but you still have all the commercial loan problems still facing the regional banks, and they'll be very involved in it. The short-term trend has been drifting against the 18-week average. If you've bought it, it's been making higher lows, higher highs, but it hasn't had the ability to run. I see a lot of resistance in it. Higher, closer to about $3, higher, 52.85. In MCHI, China, until you take out last week's high, the market looks to me bearish now. Lower highs, lower lows. This was the bear market rally that stopped there. Now, if China's gonna do something bullish and announce, let's assume that they're going to cut the bank reserve ratio, something like that, you'll know it if you can get over 40-20 last week's high, that'll be a warning sign that all of a sudden, nope, nope, you don't want to be short anymore. This market could be ready to surprise everybody and even open up wherever that upper Bollinger Band is. You're right at a very important spot. In the industrial sector, whenever you get to the Bollinger Band and you haven't hit it for a while, I know you'll be saying it's going forever. I'm not. Just the opposite. I think the pros are taking money off the table, hoping for a pullback to take another look at the market. Energy sector, same thing. Overbought into the upper band. This is where you should have your first resistance. And in the futures, you've just been doing this back and forth, Brent and WTI. Now, in the dollar, you can see lower highs, lower lows. You have to take out to say that the dollar, it's not going to stay in a downtrend last week's high. That high, let me get to it for you. Ah, let's, let me get this the right way. There we are. Uh, you have to get back over 28.16. Barring that, I think the pros are trying to push the short side of this market down through here. In gold, this is your first move over the Bollinger Band. You haven't done this in a long time where you've stayed over a Bollinger Band. That's a sign of bullishness, but I certainly would never tell a client to deploy new money over a Bollinger Band. You stay over it 5% of the time, and I know you're gonna tell me this is the time it's gonna run. Rather, I can make an argument that silver might be interesting against both the 200-day average and the 18, and the risk on it isn't terrible down to 20.45, and if it continues up, maybe it backcoats the gold market. You often see things like that. Lilly has all of a sudden got consolidation. It's a great, great company. Their story's phenomenal, but it might be ready for a little bit of a break. You do realize this market hasn't seen a 3% break, I don't think, since October. Normally, you get a 3 to 5% break, and that makes trading some of these difficult. Uber, same thing. You know, I love Uber. I've, I've made that clear here, and uh, you can see. But now it could be ready to pull back a little bit finally after this rally where the market made new highs and closed lower for the week. In uranium, still nothing. Higher high, lower low, nothing there. And I, I dropped Google, and I'm looking at Meta. Google just isn't performing. Meta's got the story, and on good breaks, it's something that I think you have to take a look at uh, because the story's so good for what they're doing. Google just seems to be missing at this point with the AI story. And if you're going to be on part of this movement, you want things that respond to it and for whatever reason, Google just isn't doing that at this point. Now, I talk about this in a lot more in my morning spider video and on my weekend one. In the weekend and the morning, I cover over 40 charts, specific buy here, sell there. You hear me talking about NVIDIA, and there's others. There's been Amazon. There's all these others that we cover. I rotate them an awful lot. There's been more action in the spiders than there's been in all the others in the futures markets, uh, and it's it's been an easier trade for whatever reason, okay? Nothing stays easy for long. I think you realize that statement. But 
it's just been a market that uh, there's so many to choose from. The pickings have been good. There's only 40 futures that make any sense to me uh, that you watch. So if you'd like to take a look at this, all you need to do is go to our website. There's two ways to do it. You can sign up for the morning subscriber video by going to the word research, or you can go to the free offer area, either one. So it's irapstein.com. You can move your cursor up to the top at any point, and away you go. I'm Ira. You have yourself a great weekend. I'll catch up with you all Monday morning.